Hey guys, Jake here coming at you with another math problem today. Today I'm going to be showing you how to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating y equals x squared between x equals 0 and x equals 2 around the x-axis. And we're going to be doing this using the disk method. So this is one of the formulas on my Calc 2 study guide, my integral calculus study guide. There's a link down in the description where you can go download that right now. It's an electronic study guide. You can print it. You can just keep it downloaded on your computer but you can get it today. You don't have to wait for it to be shipped or anything like that. So go click that link down there, go grab yourself a copy of that if you don't already have it. But this is one of the formulas on there, so I wanna make sure you know how to use the formulas on there. So this is the one we're gonna be going over today. I've got a playlist too where I'm showing you how to use all the formulas on there, so that's down in the description if you wanna check that out. Make sure to get the most use out of that study guide. But let's go ahead and jump into this problem here. So usually with these problems where we're taking some function, rotating it around some axis, and finding the volume of the solid you get from doing that, the best place to start is by drawing a sketch of what you're dealing with. So let's start by just graphing this function, y equals x squared. So if we graph that, it looks something like this, right? A parabola with the vertex at the origin, and specifically, we want to take this function just between x equals 0 and x equals 2. So let's say 2 is right here. So we just want to look right here, basically, this portion of our y equals x squared. And we want to rotate this around the x-axis, which is right here. So we're rotating, basically, we're taking this area right here and we're rotating it. So you, you kind of want to imagine, you know, if this is our axis of rotation, this stuff up here, almost imagine it coming off the paper, coming out of the screen and rotating around this X axis and going around in a circle. So basically you could kind of imagine this same shape coming down here, right? And then we're gonna get kind of a circular base right here from this thing rotating out. And it's gonna create almost like kind of like a, a cone, but obviously it's kind of um, cut into a little bit. So we have this circular base, which would be coming out off the paper. And then the whole thing kind of, you know, curves up from there. So basically we get this 3D cone-like shape from rotating this function, this portion of this function around the x-axis. So what we want to do is use the disk method to find the volume of this 3D shape right here. So the disk method, essentially what you want to think about doing is you're chopping up this 3D shape into a bunch of little disks. So you could almost imagine a bunch of little disks cut out of here. So like here's an example of one disk. You're basically chopping it up into a bunch of little tiny disks and finding the volume of each of those and then adding up all those to get the volume of the full 3D shape. So the reason why that's important to realize is this disk method formula, how you can remember it, is it basically comes from the volume of a cylinder. So the reason it's a cylinder is because you can imagine each of these disks that's being chopped up is like a little tiny cylinder, right? So you could kind of imagine a bunch of little cylinders that are, that all have a height, a tiny little height. It's just like their thickness basically. And then they all have a radius and we could take the volume of this little cylinder by taking pi r squared h. That's just the volume of a cylinder. So we're kind of using the same formula pi times r squared h in the integral to find the volume of this whole thing. So if we integrate the pi r squared h over whatever bounds we need to integrate, which we'll get into in a second, that integral should give us the volume of each of those tiny little disks added up to give us the volume of this whole cone-like shape from rotating this function around the, the axis that we were given. So to figure out the bounds of our integral, really all we wanna do is think about, since these disks are going in, you know, stacking across horizontally in the x direction, we basically just need to figure out what are all the x values where this shape exists. Well, in this case, the problem told us that we only want between x equals zero and x equals two. So that actually tells us right there, 
this three-dimensional shape only exists between x equals zero and x equals two, basically telling us that the bounds of our integral are gonna be zero and two. So now what we wanna think about is what this radius and what this height actually mean in terms of this function and in terms of this integral. So what you wanna think about basically as we go through this, this three-dimensional shape and imagine all these little disks being cut out of it, what is the thickness and what is the radius of each of those disks? Well, the, the radius of the disk, we can see, is just going to be the distance between the x-axis, which goes through the center of every single one of these disks, and this edge up here, which the, the distance between this edge up here and this center, which is exactly what a radius is, right? The radius is just the distance between the center and the edge. Well, that distance from whatever disk we're looking at, which just goes up to the height of this function right here, is just gonna be this function, right? Because the height of our function at any given point is just exactly what is meant by this y value here, right? Y is the vertical height of whatever point we're looking at. Well, we can figure out that height and that vertical distance just by plugging it into this function. So basically we know the radius of each one of these disks is just gonna be whatever the x value that we're looking at squared, because that's just the height of that function is just x squared. And then since it's since the center of the radius is, or the center of the disk, sorry, goes through the x-axis, we know that the distance between this function and the x-axis is just the height of that function. So the radius of each of our disks is just gonna be this function, which is x squared. Now we wanna think about the thickness of each of those disks, or the width, or the height, however you wanna put it. In this case, they're kind of sideways, so it's like a width, but the height of the cylinders is just the thickness of each disk. Well, when we're thinking about integrating, integrating over this function, basically what integrating is saying is I mean, that, that's all integrating is. It's just splitting up some area under a function up into a bunch of little rectangles and adding them up, right? Well, the thickness of each one of those infinitely thin disks or the thickness of each of those steps to get from one disk to the next is just the change in x between each step. Basically, each you know dx in terms of integrating just means the change in x to get from one step to the next. So when we want to set up our integral, pi is always going to be pi. We know the radius of each of these disks is going to be x squared. So for radius, we want to replace that with x squared. And then we have radius squared. So we're going to have x squared squared. And then the height of each disk is just the step distance of how much we're stepping over each time we go from one x to the next. So our h is just going to be dx. So basically, if we integrate from zero to two of pi times our radius squared dx, which in the case of integrating, basically just tells us we're integrating this with respect to x, this should give us the, the volume of this three-dimensional shape here. So first, let's go ahead and just simplify this function that we're integrating. We can pull out our pi, because that's a constant. And then x squared squared is the same as x to the fourth. And then we're still gonna have our dx here. So to integrate this, we can again just carry our pi down. Sorry, we don't want this integral here. To integrate this function x to the fourth, we raise our power by one, making it x to the fifth, and divide by our new power. So x to the fifth over five. And then we evaluate this from zero to two. So keep our pi. Plugging in two is gonna give us two to the fifth which is 32 over five. And then plugging in zero is gonna give us zero to the fifth over five, which is zero. So that gives us 32 over five minus zero is just 32 over five times pi is gonna give us 32 over five pi or 32 pi over five, however you wanna write it. So that's it, that should give us the volume of this three-dimensional shape that we get from rotating y equals x squared between 0 and 2 around the x-axis. And that was done using the disk method. 
So that's how you apply the disk method. Like I said, that's one of the formulas on my Calc 2 study guide. There's a link down in the description, so you can go get yourself a copy of that right now if you don't already have it. Uh, it should be a huge help to you, so go check that out. And be sure to subscribe to my channel. I've got a bunch more videos about how to use the formulas on that Calc 2 study guide and a bunch more coming out. So you don't want to miss them. Thanks and see you next time.